That music means one thing. Mark Schein is in studio. It's time to talk high school basketball. We've got a jam-packed Mark's Madness for you. Mark, let's jump right in. What a great night for the Lima community on Tuesday night. Lima Senior versus LCC in the Lima Cup. Much anticipated battle over 2,200 people in attendance and Lima Senior regains that Lima Cup, snapping a five-game winning streak for LCC. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Been a while. Yeah, it's a good win for the Spartans. I mean, obviously you want to succeed on your home court with all the attention that was wrapped around that game, Matt. Um, certainly it proved that the Spartans can play against quality competition, get out and run in transition when those opportunities present themselves. I think they're still a little bit stagnant in their zone offense, but they're doing so many positive things. They're on this win streak and a huge game coming up for them on Friday night up at St. John's. It's been a busy week for the Spartans. That was their fifth game in the last seven days, and now they've got a big league contest on Friday. But what they did so well is they got out in transition, forced turnovers, and we'll show you how they did it in a, a little later in the show with one specific play, but that's what made them successful in that game, correct? Well, it really did. And, of course, they're very they're deep now. They've got added another player now in Marcavius Wilson. they got Jar Ward back. He's helping them, too. So they've gotten very, very deep. They can run. They can press. They can go to their bench. They're very, very solid. You know, what Coach Kill, though, I don't think it's a negative for them. Sure, they lost, but they're not playing for a league championship. They're playing for a state tournament, and playing games like that in that type of environment can only help prepare you. They saw some weaknesses they have, things that they can work on against a quality opponent. I don't think it was a negative for Coach Kill. They were ranked fifth LCC yep. heading into that game, and just like you said, you're, you're preparing for the postseason. That was a postseason environment on Tuesday night. Well, it really was. I, they're not going to play anybody any better than that until they get very, very deep in the tournament, and that is if they find anybody at all who's that good. So I think it's a, a good situation for them. Jake Williams is still rounding back into shape after his shoulder problem. Um, obviously, Trey Cobbs is running the show at the point guard. Dan Tez Walton just continues to get better. I like what the O'Connors and Tafflinger are doing. So it wasn't a real negative. Sure, you wanted to win the basketball game, but I think it's okay for LCC to play that game. One of the possible opponents for LCC in Division Three is St. Henry, yep. and they took on a Division Four opponent, but a MAC rival in Marion Local in, a, in another huge game that was played on Friday, and St. Henry beat Marion Local for the second time this season. They did a great job, did Marion Local, taking uh, Mike Sell out of the basketball game. At times, he had two and three people coming after him, and of course, all the size that Marion Local has, but what happened is Evan Pranger stepped up. He had 20 points. He had three, uh, four three-point field goals. Stallman had nine points. They got seven out of Layfield, so they got some other guys step up, and their defense was good enough to overcome the fact that, uh, that Mike Sell only had 13 points. Marion Local led by seven yes. entering the fourth quarter, so kind of a gutsy win for St. Henry. And they were at home, and you know, big crowd there too, another sold-out gym. But you know, to come back from seven down, I think that says a lot about the Redskins. It really does, and you know, particularly when your guy, in this case, Mike Sell, struggling a little bit to get other guys to step up and perform in that environment. I think it really set them up in a good position to win the conference. Another big game coming up this week, but I think it really put them in a good spot. For Marion Local, they also lost on Saturday. It was a bit of a rough weekend. A it good was. Jackson Center team, and, and they lost by two. Where do you see the Flyers going forward now that they've, they've had a couple setbacks? Well, let's look at Jackson Center, first of all. They, they do this, this two years in a row now. They come out with a smaller basketball team that's very aggressive and yep. very quick, and they move around. They, they take care of the basketball, and I like what Coach Scott Elkert does down there for them. I think it was just a tough weekend for Marion Local. You know, we forget about the fact they played 15 football games, and, and you're going to have a night where you just go, you know what, Coach, we're trying, we're trying, but it's just not there. I think that might have been the case after the big St. Henry loss. Let's talk about Jackson Center now in the Shelby County League for a minute. Jump there. Jackson Center is in it with Rushi, Fort Warmy, and there was a big game Tuesday night in which yep. Rushi defeated Fort Warmy, which essentially knocks Fort Warmy out of that Shelby County League race. Yeah, that's correct, Matt, because now uh, Fort Army has three losses, and the other two teams, Jackson Center and Rushi, have just one loss. They're going to play. I think it's on February 6th. We'll have to check the calendar for that. They're going to play for what will probably be a championship game then because both Jackson Center uh, and Rushi have one loss right now. Jack, uh, Rushi won their regular season matchup the first time they play. Of course, in that conference, they play everybody twice, so they would be the favorite, of course, but they're still going to have to find a way to beat Jackson Center again. Close race there. We're going to mm. be watching that one closely, just like we're watching the NWC closely in Spencerville on top of Bluffton this weekend. Pirates now have two league losses. Remember, they were one of our yeah. few unbeatens left. They were, and of course, that was a big win for Spencerville because it kind of kept them in the race, as we talked about last week. Now Bluffton has two losses, and, and with Crestview and with Grove being undefeated in conference play, it really put Bluffton in a very severe hole trying to win this conference. Maybe they get a tie, but probably not. And on the other hand, it kept Spencerville close. 
Of course, Grove is one of the couple teams also yep. playing in, in another conference, in the PCL, and they squared off with Kaleida on Saturday, and Kaleida defeated Columbus Grove. Kaleida's perfect in the Putnam County League. How many times have we talked about the fact Grove's trying to win in two conferences and how difficult that is? So Friday night game, Saturday night game, and Clyde is good, you know. Unperforth can score, Quartercrafts can score. Um, they got some points by, by Laudick the other night. He had 10 for them. So I like what Coach Quartercrafts has put together there at Kaleida. Seen them play once live, and I really like what they're doing. They're in the driver's seat right now, but some games to play yet. Western Buckeye League, always exciting. Another big game. Defiance holds serve against yep. OG. So now, OG also a close loss to Lima Senior on the weekend, and we always talk about how difficult their schedule is on any given weekend. The Western Buckeye League, Salina, Defiance, what do, what do we have? Well, right now, I think it's come down. Obviously, a huge game this week. Salina and St. Mary's match up this week, and that, of course, is a huge game in the conference this week. They're both currently undefeated in conference play. If Salina wins, they're in the driver's seat. You know, they've gone through the meat of their schedule so far. They have difficult games remaining. They go to Shawnee, and that's a team that could fire a bunch of baskets up with O'Neill and with Tucker and might beat you. And, of course, they have Elida at home last conference game. But if St. Mary's wins, the race is far from being over. St. Mary's still has to play Defiance. They have to go to Wapak. They have to go to Ottawa Glendorf before finishing up the season with Van Wert at home. So St. Mary's really has a lot of tough games remaining yet. Salina wins. They're in the driver's seat. St. Mary's wins. I think the race is wide open. That's why we play the game. Just to also sure. mention that Elida started 0-5. They've won five of their last yeah. seven. Great job by Denny Thompson and that whole crew, who we know they're replacing a lot of guys. Seems like they're really gelling right now. We replaced a bunch of guys, and they got healthy. You know, they've got Sarno back. He's playing after his ankle situation. Allmeyer was struggling early in the year with an ankle situation. They've got some young players who have grown up, like Stinson and Press and so on. They've gotten physically more mature playing in that particular conference, more experience. I get to see them this week with uh, Shawnee on Friday night uh, over at Shawnee. It'll be an interesting game because Shawnee's got two guys who can just flat out score and, and, and O'Neill and Tucker. It'll be a real interesting basketball game. Should be a good one. We'll get you our full broadcast schedule in just a bit. Let's close with uh, this boys section with the NWCC. And USV beat Lehman Catholic, yep. high scoring affair. Then USV also lost to Lormy on Saturday in a non-conference game. So. The NWCC kind of wide open again, right? Well, as, as we've talked about for quite a bit, it's Perry and it's USV. They're both undefeated in conference play, and they play late, and that's probably for the conference championship. But the loss to Fort Laramie, a 30-point loss on a Saturday night, that, that was a little bit hard to understand. The USV has played well. They scored points. They put just 42 points on the board. Obviously, Laramie is good. We, we know that, but uh, that was a strange loss. And, just one of those things that happens, I guess, when you get to mid-January high school basketball. The Army got off to a very fast uh -huh. start in that game and kind of never looked back. Well, now it's time to break down a couple of plays for you, and we're excited to break out our hey. new Telestrator. Watch Mark go to work on our brand new iPad here. We'll get it all set up for him. We're going to take a look at a game that he called. It was Wapak New Bremen from Saturday. Well, what we have here is New Bremen, and you see Carson Monger making this really nice cut off the screen set up by his teammate. And what sets this up is, Carson Monger has before cut over top of the screen. So he makes a jab step to his left, and then he's going to make a baseline cut off of his teammate right here. He's going to post up down low, excellent movement without the basketball, draws a little contact, and that's why Carson Monger's scored 1,000 points in his career using that screen appropriately. And on this one, we get a Wapak kid who gets pressured out front. I think it's Huffman, really gets pressured hard out front, and he is smart enough to take the basketball off the dribble, penetrate against an opponent, and go right to the rim. And when that happens, you'll see a player from New Bremen step over to take a play. He's going to make a nice pass off inside, avoid the charge, find his teammate, and find the basket. You attack pressure by going to the rim. That's exactly what he did and found his teammate. Then we're going to have a chance to look at a couple free throws by Carson Monger in his great form. You're going to see Carson, of course, over 1,000 points in his career in this particular game. He had scored his 1,000th point the night before. But watch his form. Now, typically, we would say his right elbow is out just a little bit, but his follow-through is outstanding. You can see his eyes are on the rim right here. Typically, we want that elbow in towards his number 12, just a little bit more than it is. But he's such a good shooter. He compensates. Eyes on the rim. Great follow-through. Carson Monger, a good free throw shooter. Now let's just take a look here at one of the ways in which Lima Senior helped build a big lead. This is actually going to be from the third quarter, so something that they did for most of the game, but buckets in transition, turning defense into offense. Well, Stafford realizes the pass is a little bit weak coming to the wing. He gets a left hand on it for the steal. Now typically you might knock that ball out of bounds, but because he uses his left hand to get the steal, he knocks the ball to his right hand, 
And then, of course, when Rico Stafford's out in transition, watch out. Left hand on the ball to his right hand. Instead of knocking it out of bounds, he knocks it to his dribble hand, and Rico Stafford goes off to the rim. Big basket. You can see how the crowd reacts and a big emotional moment for the Spartans. Any excuse to get a dunk on Mark Spanis, <laughs> we will take. But that really was the, pretty much the story of the game for Lima Senior and a, a big win for them. Well, what had happened was LCC kept making runs at him and defensive plays like that got him out in transition. They got control of the basketball game again. So now let's turn our attention to the week ahead. And just as last week and the week prior, and I'm sure in the weeks to come, we'll have big games to look forward to. So what are we looking at for this week? I'm going to rattle off some Friday games for you, Mark. You pick out two or three, and, and let's, okay. let's talk about why we're excited about okay. it. We've got St. Henry, Delphi, St. John's yep. in the MAC. Versailles, Marion, Local in the MAC. Spencerville, Columbus Grove. Lima, Senior, St. John's in the track. St. Mary's, Salina, obviously the big one in the WBL. LB, Arlington in the BBC. All on Friday. What are you most excited for? Well, because we've already covered St. Mary's and Salina, I'm going to move on. Let's look at Lima Senior in a track game. Of course, they go to St. John's. Each team has, oh, actually, Lima Senior has one conference loss. St. John's has not lost yet. Lima Senior lost in overtime at home. Each team still has six conference games to play after this. The Spartans need to win to not the race up. It's something they can do. They're certainly a much better basketball team than they were when they played the second game of the season. That's a huge game, I think, for the Spartans to go in track play to uh, Toledo St. John's. Trying to keep that winning streak alive. And then what do you think about the two, two big games in the MAC? The, well, those are very important games in the MAC. First of all, Delphi St. John's, they have two losses. But if you look, one was to Coldwater, so they have a league loss. Mm -hmm. But Odin Weller was sick with the flu that weekend. And all coaches are worried about three things. You worry about the three Fs, fouls, fatigue, and the flu. He <laughs> had the flu and missed the whole weekend. That's when they lost their two games. So they will be a much better opponent than those two losses will look like to St. Henry. And I think it's at Delphi St. John's makes it even better over there. And of course, for sales and uh, Marion Local, each have one conference loss. The winner needs to win to kind of stay in the race and hope somebody upsets St. Henry. More D1 talent versus D1 talent. Whenever two schools in the max square off, there's a pretty good chance you're going to have D1 basketball talent going against each other. You know, and not only that, but you look at the star for each team, but each team has all these quality guys that they surround them with. So it's not just, yeah, it's not just Kyle Arns against Ryan Mike Sell or, or you know, the Marion local kids. Right, Pranger against, stepping up for St. Yeah, Henry's see, a great it, example. It, because they're such athletically oriented communities and yep. schools and, and kids just step up and make plays, it's hard to figure out just a particular player to concentrate on. Here's Saturday's games. Savannah Crestview is a big one. Grove OG, Spencerville, St. John's. Rushi Versailles, like, what are we looking at here? Well, uh, you could pick any of those and talk a lot about it, what game means. I, I'm going to go with Rushi Versailles just because I like how that matchup comes. Uh, Rushi, of course, is highly rated. Stumbled with Anna earlier uh, in the week. But uh, I, I really think Versailles in the way they're playing, that's a huge basketball game. And it's one of those non-conference games where you can just kind of show up and play. You know, it's a couple of Shelby County League schools, but it's not a Shelby County League game. And they could just show up and play and have a lot of fun and really go at each other. And, and there's no real pressure on it because it's not going to cost you a league championship. If you lose, just go out and play and have fun. And I think it'll be a really good basketball game. Great games this weekend coming up. Before we get to our broadcast schedule, quick look at the girls. Yep. We've got Crestview and Liberty Bend. They're the only two unbeatens in, on boys or girls, right. but the only two, obviously, girls unbeaten. And Wapak, big victory over New Knoxville last night. Yeah, you know, if you, you just take those first two teams you talked about, Liberty Benton and Crestview, it's hard to go undefeated with a 22-game schedule. But if you look at who they have beaten and who they have to play yet, mm -hmm. those two teams could well be 22-0 and when the regular season comes to an end heading into the tournament because both of them have very winnable games from here on out. And you're right, nice win by Wapak the other night. They're not going to win the Western Buckeye League, of course, unless Bass would stumble, stumble somewhere along the line. But that was a good win over to Knoxville. OG also defeated... Salina to pretty much secure yep. second in less bath stumbles and OG is still you know right there for a share of yep. the league title. Right but that's what's going to have to take somebody's going to have to upset the bath wildcats that would be unexpected. New Bremen also a win over USV over the mm -hmm. weekend that was USV's just their second loss of the year so nice win for the lady cards. Yep we were down there the other night and they were still talking about it in the stands when we got down to New Bremen to do their game with Wapak with the boys game they were still talking about the win they had in the afternoon. And Fort Laramie 8 0 in the Shelby County Fort Laramie good on the boys' side, and girls' side is always, always a good team. Uh, the Fort Laramie Redskins, Lady Redskins, they're 9-0 and in conference play, and you look at the games they have to play at, they have Anna that they've beaten by 19, they have Houston who they beat by 33 in the, previous, in the first round, and Jackson Center who they beat by 22, so they have a very good chance to go undefeated in conference play. They still have to play Marion Local and Bath, both on the road in non-conference games, so they have two real challenges um, you know, to go through the rest of the season with just one loss. That should get them ready for that district, that yep. sectional district, and 
hopefully regional and state if they're if they're lucky enough to make it that far. And finally, let's just finish with the PCO. It's Kaleida and Lipsick at the top. You have a favorite out of those two on the girls' side? Yeah, whoever wins their matchup on, <laughs> on Valentine's Day. They Smart play on guy. February 14th, and, and uh, the favorite, obviously, for the rest of the conference season. They would be both be favored to win to get to that particular point and be undefeated in conference play, obviously, barring an upset. But whoever wins that matchup, and that, that's a pick em game right now, wins the PCL. Let's take a look at our broadcast schedule now, and it starts with a girls game, Fort Recovery versus Cold Water Girls, Friday 9 p.m. You can see that on WOSN. Two games for you Friday evening, 10.30 versus Sales Marion Local Boys, yep. and then 10.44 on WTLW Columbus Grove Spencerville Boys. Saturday, four games if you include the ONU men's basketball game versus John Carroll, which we'll have live for you at 3 p.m. 8.30, it's a lot of our Shawnee boys. Sounds like that's where you'll be. Yep. So you can watch Mark on the call there Saturday at 8.30 p.m. 10.30 p.m. on WOSN Lipsick versus Kaleida boys. And then 10.30 on WTLW St. Henry versus Wapak boys. And I'm really looking forward to that. Mark Miller and I get to call that game. I have only seen Ryan Mikesell this year on film, on, on tape, well, on TV. And Saturday. I am looking forward to seeing Ryan Mikesell. I'm sure Coach Selvey at Wapak probably isn't. But I'm looking forward to seeing him in person and see how he plays. Going to be a lot of fun for Look you, and that. we're looking forward to watching that one back Saturday at 10.30 on WTLW after the Sports Report. Sunday, 7.30 p.m., Fort Recovery versus Fort Lormie Boys, Battle of the Forts. And then some wrestling for you at 9, LCC Thunderbird Wrestling Invitational, Sunday at 9 p.m. Andy Lynch will be on the call. Well, thank you as always, yep. Mark. Another successful of edition of Mark's Madness in the books. Telestrator. And the Telestrator will we'll have it, all, the, all the kinks worked <laughs> out by next time, I'm sure. But thanks for joining us and uh, enjoy your games over the weekend.